<laughs> now, once upon a time, there was this up and coming poetry writer by the name of Tony the Tiger. Now, he was a reformed crook who loved to read books, and people said he was destined to be great. Now, he wasn't supposed to leave the state because he was in the process of fighting his case for getting caught in the airport with two pounds of frosted flakes <laughs> taped to his waist. <laughs> now, Tony the Tiger was a rebel to the core, and he believed in his dream, and he knew he had to bounce. So he told that federal agent Captain Crunch he could suck on his grape nuts and he hopped on the train down south. <laughs> so he had read all about this popular poetry spot called the Honeycomb Hideout. Well, each and every week you could hear the hottest poets in the country speak, and you could even sit back in the back and puff on some shredded wheat. Now, at that particular time, the hottest, port, the hottest cat on the scene was this cat from Queens. Now, he robbed the Yankees hat in the back with a black knapsack, and he went by the name of Dignam Smacks. Now, Dignam Smacks rode with a couple other dudes in his crew, one with this pussy pork, one to be player that went by the name of Sugar Bear. And the third dude in that crew, where well, he really thought he was the man, this pseudo-intellectual always talking about the white man's plan, and he went by the name of Toucan Sam. The Toucan Sam rocked with our tattoos and Tim boots, Tim boots, and other girls thought he was cute. But it really wasn't hard to tell that he was just an undercover Fruit Loop. <laughs> <laughs> now after a while, Tony Tiger started gaining a reputation as being a local live wire. You know, every time he stepped to the mic, he was known to spit some fire. And I eventually earned him a few admirers, but also gave him a few more haters. But Tony Tiger was straight up hustler, more concerned about turning his poetry into paper. Mm -hmm. Plus, he was already in a run down to the 10 year bid, so most of these silly poets never realized <laughs> tricks is for kids. So Tony <laughs> Tiger spent the majority of the time till the final little feeling out about 5 now with a nice behind. Now, she didn't have a lot of money, but she had a whole lot of ambition since she was a full-time college student who was just stripping to pay her tuition. Now, Tony Tiger, he really loved this chick. He even used to call her his little Miss Cookie Crisp. But when she was at work getting them tips and them tucks, the customers at the club knew her as Cocoa Puffs. Now, when we went back after the open mic, Tony Tiger and his homeboy OJ was on their way to this after-hour spot called the Breakfast Club. But right before they got to the car, they ran to one of their local rapper friends by the name of Lucky Charms. And he starts breaking down this conversation he had overheard at the bar. He was like, man... This dude, Digger Smacks, and a couple other cats were talking about pushing Tony Tiger's wig back. As a matter of fact, Digger Smacks was pissed off that Tony Tiger been dating Cocoa Puffs when a couple days, called a couple weeks of the day and broke up. And that one big player by the name of Sugar Bear, well, he was pissed off that Tony had been dissing Pussy Poor for doing Poor's been getting pussy, so Pussy Poor's was to get pussy, plus, plus he said he owed him some loot, and that third, you know. <laughs> And the third dude in the crew, uh, and the man too, Ken Sam, uh, he was just an undercover fruit loop trying to front for his crew. And that's when Tony Tiger looked at OJ, looked at Tony Tiger, was like, yo, black, you know I got your back, so we can do whatever you want to do. And what we need to do is go somewhere and put together a plot how we're going to pop these tarts. And that's when Tony took, that's when Tony Tiger looked at a quick sigh out. He said, man, fuck it, let's just ride out. So they pulled out from the honeycomb hideout. They went a couple blocks up the street, got him a bag of shredded wheat, went to the Cocoa Puffs house. And that's when Tony Tiger starts breaking down his plan. He was like, man, I know that dude digging smacks and the rest of them cats routine like the back of my hand. I mean, every night after the open mic, I be seeing them punk poetry thugs till at the breakfast club. And they'll chill for a while, then they start getting hungry. And that's when they go to the all night drive through to get him a couple egg McMuffins. That's what Tony Tiger said, man, this is what me and you are about to do. We're about to catch these cats slipping right in the drive through So they went to the corner, Quaker Oats and Post, lay low in the cut, waiting for these cats to pull up. So they waited for about an hour or two, and it was around 6 a.m. And that's when Digger Smack and the crew pulled up in the drive through the Red Grand Dam. That's when Tony Tiger and OJ snuck up from the back. All of a sudden, you heard Tony Tiger yell out, Yo, Black, this is the Applejack. You heard the sound of a snap, crack, and a pop. OJ yelled, that old shit, I've been shot. And Tony Tiger looked over his shoulder and realized somebody had spoiled the pot and called the cops. And as he continued to look a little closer over his shoulder, his jaw just dropped and his heart was about to bust. Because standing looking him dead in his eye was that federal agent Captain Crunch. But that wasn't even the part that was messed up. Because standing right next to Captain Crunch was his own goddamn girlfriend, Coco Puffs. <laughs> That's when Tony Tiger removed the wolf from his eyes to realize he had been played for a dummy. He thought Coco Puss really loved him, but she just found out he was a wanted man and only wanted the reward money. Mm. Now, Tony Tiger was already a two-time felon, so this was his third strike. So he was eventually extradited back up north when he was facing 25 to life. Now, the moral of this story is that the poetry game is not all that different from the rap game and the crack game, so them old school rules still apply. No matter how cuckoo you are for them Coco Puffs, never trust a big button to smile. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right.